What's going on everybody? This is Clay from Merlin's Vault once again to pick up where we left off last time on the Grim Fang Cook who is looking really cool so far. He just has the base coat colors on. And last time I wasn't even able to put on a wash or anything like that. The only thing I did between then and now it was apply one coating of Nuln oil on the cauldron, on the any of the silver pieces really, the cleaver, and the giant razor cleaver on his shoulder, just to make sure that we can get to a lot of parts of the model and not just wait on the curing for the for the coating. You can see that it's still a little bit wet. I applied it just before I press play. So hopefully we can get to some of the cool parts of the cleaver because we're gonna add a lot of gross liquid. Find out if it was blood or some sort of ilk that you can find up in the mountains where these guys are from. They have a lot of things on the menu for today. So let's see what's on special and just jump right into it. Let's go. The first thing I want to do is actually work on his bare fur just over his shoulders and on different parts of his body. And what we're going to do is a little bit of dry brushing. So right now, the only color that we've applied so far, uh, excuse me, sir, is Fenrisian Gray. I'm actually going to use some more Citadel colors here. I'm going to apply some Blue Horror because it's a nice uh, light, lighter blue to the Fenrisian Gray. And it's actually going to transform more into white with Othulian Gray. Othuan Gray. I don't know where I got that extra L and I, but we're going to shake this up. Always good to shake up your paints before use. Get that little pot in the back of the Citadel paints. And see what this guy is cooking up for us today. So right now, I'm going to be using, bristles are kind of lumped together because it's kind of an older brush. I just went out and bought some new brushes ju just for this video today, but I don't know where they are. I must have put them somewhere crazy. So I'm going to use this kind of older, uh, large dry brush or medium dry brush, I guess you can call it, and just apply this color to these sections on the fur coat. Here we go. Just going to get some of this. I do want to apply just a little bit of water to make sure that it doesn't look too dry, doesn't come off uh, that easily in little particles, I guess you can call it. I don't know what you call it. And then you just make sure that it's not too built up on the brush. And then you apply it very lightly to the back of the coat. And what's cool about this model is that all of the raised areas are really well defined. Let's see if they can get, there we go. And now I can just easily brush over those marks without changing the entire color. And I'm gonna go a little bit heavier with this one since we have uh, another color to apply on top of our two bluish grays here and if I do it off camera I'm just applying the brush to the little paper towel because you want to uh, you don't want a lot you want just a just enough where you can go over all the raised areas on the coat and I think we were talking about this coat last time we were uh, saying that this is more of like a polar bear pelt. The orcs don't seem to have a problem with the cold, but I think this is more to just kind of scare their enemies, say, hey, we're like the number one on the food chain here. We are the apex predator up in the in the mountains or in the Arctic. We dug this pretty cool guy out of the ice. He's a, he's a frost giant. He was ahead of his time. And he's here to bless us with frost giant strength and resilience. And as an adventurer, you're like, cool, I'm gonna go check this, this out. And really put your invincibility to the test here, Mr. Orc King. 
Um, all right. Just kind of deciding how much I want to build up here on the shoulders. Already, that's catching the uh, the light. I'm looking pretty cool. And you can also do this with a wet palette. You don't need to be doing it on just a dry palette like what I'm doing here. Hitting the camera with my brush and the blunt end of my brush here. And what we can do after this white is applied is actually apply just a little bit of wash to certain areas. Just kind of where the shadows would naturally stick out on a fur coat so it doesn't look too clean. I want it to look a little bit natural, like it's just been kind of sitting for a while. All right, let's go to the front side here. See how well this brush uh, does. The bristles are a little bit closer together, but I can still control it fairly well. It's not getting on other parts of the outfit or other parts of the model. Just where I need it to be. You can kind of see how that left side there now has a little bit more of that natural lighting to that that coat all right the trickier part I'm gonna have to get right behind his head sorry if it goes out of focus just a little bit and you can do this with other uh, colors too just find some good grays or grayish blues that you like and definitely look up some reference material. I mean, there's really subtle differences that make all the difference when you're painting a, a model like this. For uh, animals, you can look up like a, what a winter wolf's kind of fur looks like, as opposed to a, uh, a, a shorter haired bear. Let's wipe some of that off, all right. I want this side to be a little bit more punchier. And I think for a wolf, you can actually see a little bit more white, uh, grayish and a little more grays and tans. And I can actually show you in a second what that looks like on a model. So for an example, my orc came here. Focus please, thank you. Has more of a tannish golden color. And whatever wolf that he's uh, taken down has a lot more lighter color than, you, than you'd think. And darker recesses of areas. Kind of providing like a good palette, like a good variety of colors there. All right, almost finished on this coat. I'm just looking for the raised areas. Don't concentrate on the pools too much. Showing off this nice orange color that I'm not going to be using on the model at all. So I, I use it more of just like holding on to the model through like some blue tack that you can pick up on any like hardware or ho hobby store. Looking more intimidating by the second. Really 
take your time on these steps. It's really easy to become impatient. You want to see that last part of the model. And I feel the same way at times. But really appreciate just the, all the intricate like little layers and stuff that goes into the model. And the more you do this, the more you can just naturally pick up a color and start uh, painting a little bit more confidently, a little bit more time efficiently. All right, and if we put too much contrast, so say this little area right here, I can apply that little wash that I was talking about before into this little line right here to make sure it doesn't look, uh, it looks like the, the colors kind of more blend together. And that's what we want to fix there. Again, making sure that the there's not too much paint on the brush. So it's just enough when you apply it to the raised areas of the model. You're brushing downwards as to only hit the top parts where that meet the uh, that the light reflects off of. Oh, got a little bit on his boot, which is fine. I can kind of clean it off like this. Or that can become frost or something a little bit later. Good solid color that I can apply over that. So it's kind of why I do the frost first because these other colors are so dark, it's a lot easier to fix a darker color than it is a lighter color. So don't get too frustrated. I try not to. So it looks like chili is on the menu. And as you start to paint these guys, I like to think to myself like how I can use these guys in combat. Uh, one of the scenarios that the, the booklet has you go through, and spoilers if you're uh, painting these guys and not running the game, is that they you find in the cooking pot, which is this... Uh, big kind of kitchen area where you smell a, a combination of foul uh, kind of like rotten ilk from one corner of the room or another and the aroma uh, seems to be coming from a lot of dead animals and uh, foul things that they they picked up and try to spruce up their meal. I mean, they do what they can. They tr they want to make it edible. They don't care so much about uh, how it tastes or smells. But there is a cooking pot on one side of the room that these two guys, uh, two of who I'm painting right here, are working on, and they're throwing pieces of decapitated seal. Uh, they're throwing. Um, like old rotten wolf meat and uh, there's parts of a Yeti inside of this cooking area and they just keep tossing new things in. Um, that looks good to me. I'm gonna switch things up and move on to my next color. And they have large cleavers and large meat saws and are hacking several different pieces. I think they're that big saw blade is a little bit too much unless you're working with a Yeti specifically. And we're all just talking about the the fantasy setting, not in real life. I love animals too much to be working on, on things like that. But with Yetis, I imagine you need to use that big meat cleaver. And if the players get too close to the pot, they are gonna have to roll some constitution saving throws. This is uh, Ulthi and Gray. 
And I'm gonna do the same dry brushing technique, except just a little bit lighter. Let's see. Okay, I like this color. Kinda look dark just on the palette right next to each other. But on my thumb, uh, actually it looks pretty nice. All right, and if at any point, since you are doing dry brushing, you don't like the color, just try like a couple of strokes and see what your initial thoughts are. That's not bad. I could go a little bit lighter, and I might do that in just certain, certain areas. And again, you're just brushing down. Kind of like a down strumming with a guitar. You're not going back up because they're actually, it's gonna work against you here. And like I said, they're, if they get too close to the pot, they're gonna end up rolling some constitution saving throws just because the smell is so bad. It's like, Someone who forgot to clean the microwave and they just microwave fish. You ever have a coworker that would microwave fish and you're like, rule break, you know? It's just something you don't do at work. Well, these guys are doing something a lot worse than that. See, I'm just picking out different little strands of hair on here. And if they catch you, these guys are pretty dang aggressive. They can use their bonus action to run up their full speed for a, another attack, like an incoming attack. Um, but you could also adapt their strategy, and maybe they're um, using something to kind of fling pieces of meat at you. The one that's on, on his person, he can also use a bonus action to reach in there and eat something kind of gross that you describe to the players so he can heal himself. Just trying to get it fixed right there on that spot. Okay. So maybe you want to adapt like a strategy or present something to the players where maybe there's some dialogue exchange between the cooks if they're stealthy enough and for long enough they can actually hear that whatever they're putting in the stew is actually so bad and almost like acid-like. So you could say something about, these guys, I've been having indigestion for weeks. You know, something to kind of really gross out your players. And so by the time uh, they get up there, maybe they want to just push one of the cooks in to the pot. And maybe that's how they can deal with one almost immediately. And it really, that, um, makes the the players feel important in the gaming decision all right looking pretty good for our orc but boy here looks like he's thriving in the mountains with his uh, fur coat all right And now I'm pretty pleased with the, the fur coat, but I'm going to, at this point, apply just a little bit, a little bit of contrast to it. Uh, 
And I've got this really neat one, Pilar Glacier. And anything frost sounding in the name has this really cool kind of ice looking effect to it. And there's another one that we're gonna be using later too uh, for the base, it's called Thousand Suns Blue. But if you didn't have this contrast, you can also apply, since the colors are very similar, a Lothern Blue and water it down, kind of like in a ratio with medium contrast. But what we're gonna do is apply this and I'm also gonna be using a little bit of Drakenoff Nightshade and with a little Lamium Medium. So I like the different combinations of colors here. I don't like just one color over another. So from that color we were talking about from before, just applying a little bit to the kind of the lower areas of the boot. Okay. and see how that has kind of like a cool light effect to it. Actually quite like that. All right, and it's nice and light. It's not uh, a full contrast color because I think that would be a little bit much. I'm trying to keep this light. I'm just trying to get some of those spots where it looks just a little bit too white to me. Kind of around those little pendants over the cloak. While that's dry, you can also wet blend a little bit of this glacier uh, Pilar Glacier along in here. Just in a few areas. Just as it adds just like a little bit more, like every time you look at the model you pick up something different. That's how I look at the um, these colors. Or you can totally leave it at just the three colors that we built up on the miniature. I think this gives it kind of like this cool, he's been frozen for a while. He just lives in a perpetual icy state. and see how it just sinks into the recesses so you have that nice uh, grayish white color on the very top, the brightest color, along with these little icicles that are in between uh, in the, the fur coat. That ice tends to do that and cling to it. And I'm just going random with it. I'm having a little bit of fun. Uh, actually picking and choosing where my light blue glacier kind of look goes. After you do a little wet blending, you want to make sure that dries and we can add to it a little bit later if we want. But I like that look. It has a nice kind of contrast from the skin color as well. So let's make sure that we close up our washes and our contrast and move on. I think I'm gonna move on to this other item that's been been really been craving some more paint is the apron. Now this Cook's apron already looks uh, pretty nice and leathery but I want to actually add some fabric, some uh, actual texture to it. So what I'm going to do is go from that wash brush that we were using and go into a smoother brush or a skinnier brush and then use a Bane Blade Brown. The first color, if you weren't there for that, was Gorthar Brown. 
And if I notice that a color has like a lot of reds or like a certain tone to it, for an example, uh, it's usually going to blend right in as a lot of Citadel colors kind of tend to do. Or uh, you can start uh, even more gradually with having a mixture of Gorthar Brown and Bane Blade. But here I'm just gonna jump into this one and I'm using a uh, very light um, paint on here. Definitely, definitely water down your brushes and I'm just hitting all the, the raised areas here, okay? Now this lamp is allowing me to see a little bit easier. Where I can actually see where all the darker recesses should lie. And I think the, the contrast and the wash is really good for beginners uh, going into the hobby. If you're never, if you're not really satisfied with how well you did on on the gradual increases of color, you can always use the wash to kind of get you out of a, that tight space and make it look a little bit more natural. See, I'm just picking out all those colors. Not taking too long on a certain space. Just applying that paint. sides of the robe here. We got that Gorthar Brown serving as the base of the color. So even if you went over top with the this color, the next shift or gradual increase will be the one where we pay more attention to on just the raised areas. Not doing too bad on time. How are you all doing today? What epic encounter creature have you been most excited to paint? Because these are really cool models. They have so much personality to them. And they're really good at building up those armies, those squads of enemies. So whether that be uh, ice worshipping orcs or uh, swamp dwelling tree frog riding goblins I think we can agree that these are some of the coolest models for D&D &D that you can get for a good price and good adventure and kind of just hits a lot of marks for me personally Okay, so got that apron, and I use the same color, so you can apply the same color on the, on the tips of the shoes as he's trudging around on those all day, but just kind of show you the, the colors real quick. And now, after Bay, bay I want to say Beyblade so bad, just got to rev them up, right? Now I'm going to take a chance and use this Ushapti Bone. There you go, you kind of see the label. I use these a lot. And with Ushapti Bone, I'm just gonna mix a little of that uh, Beyblade in from uh, before. And just kind of see how the colors match up. Yeah, just use a little bit of that color. Kind of build up the colors. 
and see if I want to go one more layer. And now I'm using just just trying to pick out more raised areas like this wrinkle right below the waist all right just trying to go very carefully here Maybe just where the fabric is being pushed out, just under the shield here. And this color is going to stand out very, um, it's going to be very apparent. So maybe just the lines of the outline of the apron just to make it stand out a little bit more where that fabric's hitting right there there we go just these like bottom lines here very lightly and I just want to teach people to just paint confidently even though it's like it's not exactly uh, what you're aiming for initially by picking out these these colors and just finding like what works and what doesn't I think you're gonna like your results There we go. And you're gonna definitely enjoy that encounter with your players that much more because you painted this yourself here. kind of light and the wrinkles up here. That's why I'm kind of just more so dabbing and seeing what I like and what, it almost kind of looks like stitching, you know what I mean? Where you see like individual stitches. And in the comments below, what do you think the name of this orc is going to be? I'm definitely going to run this once all the miniatures are painted. Maybe the, the top rated comment, I'm going to use that as the actual name of our main orc cook. So help, help me out in the comments. Right. Not bad. Just fixing one little part off screen here. And where you see a lot of tan right here, I can add one more layer to actually make to make that look more smooth. All right. Now with those colors on the apron, we've got our tan apron there. It looks like it's all bunnied up and, and pretty filthy. I'm going to go 
into a full unmixed Kushapti bone this time. Just pick up a couple of more details on here. See these really raised areas here. I'm just going really light. You only want the the actual raised bits on the model, and that's kind of the less is more approach to this. So where it's like the most sharp, like these little corners, put that right there. Nice tan cloak or apron, kind of do that same for both here. to the actual pot or the bone itself. There is a bone on top uh, for the handle of this big machete that he has. And with that, I'm actually gonna use a contrast to kind of pick out those little resources but not go too much in contrast. What I'm gonna use is Agros Dunes. It's one of my favorites for any kind of like antlers or natural armor like for a like armored slate pieces of a dragon, kind of like their stomach or chests, or even for a underbelly of a Yanti. This is one of my favorite contrast paints for those. There are little straps on here. So I wanna make sure that I uh, paint those after this dries. And once this dries, I can go over top of it and add the more of the details that I had from before. I'm not sure if there's bone sticking out right there, but I'm gonna hit it just in case. I can go over it after that dries. Excellent. All right. And you can even add it to the color that I have set for up top here. And what I'm gonna do is aim just for the, the tops of the bone here. And the way contrast works with layering you know obviously like the more contrast that you use the darker it's going to get so i'm going to wait until this uh contrast that i'm applying right now dries and then when it does i can add another layer that's a little bit higher up than what i used from before Get that little bone on that little meat thing. I don't know what kind of meat that is though. So you're gonna see that really cool effect with, that you see on like um, a bull's horns where it gets darker uh, towards the sharpest tip of the, of the horn there. Just that, 
just need, requires just a little bit of, of paint, not too much. I'm going to let that dry. There's actually a little bit right here above where his hand is. Kind of limited on how much space I have on the work table eventually, but hopefully I'm going to get a, a better overhead camera hook arm kind of set up. All right, hydrating off camera. Always good to do that. Okay. Miniatures looking pretty cool so far. Now it looks like that Nuln oil from before has dried. So I can also add more layers of Nuln oil and letting it dry completely if you want to darken it up even further. But right now what I'm going to do is add some rust spots to it. These weapons that they use are not as clean as that you might see on a, like a clean set or a serrated blade. I am going to use a little bit of Ryza Rust, which is a dry paint. And this is just going to be painted on in certain areas. And it has this little subtle effect, these dry paints. And if you can see, I'm just putting some rise of rust along where the, the bladed edge is. And hopefully you can pick that up. There's um, a couple of riveted plates on this just disgusting looking weapon. But the con constitution score of an orc is really high, so whatever they're using to, to cut with, it's not going to be too much of a, have too much of an effect on them. And this can just be applied pretty easy, you don't want to just clump it on there. It's a really cool color for, for metal. And we're actually going to just apply it not over the entire model. We're just going to pick little details that we want to add more rust to. And I'm probably going to add a little bit to the cleaver as well. They don't take care of these tools of the kitchen as you and I would would. And you can also have this really cool effect with, um, there's a technical paint, I think it's called Typhus, uh, Typhus something rather, where it looks like dark rusted metal, like some, you know, water got into it, um, and caused some little bit of corrosion. Maybe it's, that's what it is, a Typhus corrosion. And something I've used on the Death Guard before, and it gives it even a cooler, uh, subtle appearance of this rust just never taking care of their armor. It's uh, falling apart constantly. Uh, let's see. Maybe I'll just add a little bit to the cauldron as well. Yeah, they're keeping this chili that we've established in the previous episode in this just rusted pot. And I'm just going pretty fast at this point. Maybe you want to pick out your colors a little bit more. Uh, you know, take your time a little bit more than I did here. I love these little riveted and like little corners and things on the on the pot.
Cool. And also want to make sure for just from the top points here that there's just rust in between all these little individual razors. And then we gotta add just a little bit of rust to the back end of the blade too. I was so confused when I opened up my first uh, uh, rust paint. I didn't pay attention to what all the individual types of paint were, like technical, dry, layer, base, anything like that. Yeah, what a brutal looking instrument of combat or cooking. Really just don't want to mess with this guy. There we go. Now he's got some rusty instruments on him. And then we can go a step further on the metal weapon and provide just like a little bit of a lighter silver. This is what gives it that edge, makes it sharp. So I'm gonna put the storm host, the storm host silver on there, just to show you what that can do. Got into my Rise of Rust Orange a little bit. That would have been awkward. Okay. So see those little individual uh, razors. What I'm gonna do is find the best angle for this for first foremost. And just apply it to the very edges. Or if you've got grains, like how it has the uh, the lines in metal, you can find those really sharp looking angles and really give it some cool look to it. So now it's looking even more sharp around those edges there. just around the edges of the shield on his stomach. You can make a lot of really sharp points on metal stand out. Okay. You can also just kind of do a little dry brushing on here if you're using that other brush to only get those fine points, to have those stand out. And maybe just the rim of the cauldron, just in really 
You don't want to overdo the high silvered areas. Just like little corners, little edges, things like that. Also this little manacles that he has on him. Maybe if he captures one of the players, string them up like they're going to be adding to the menu. Looks like adventurers on the menu, boys. I don't know. I use a lot of Lord of the Rings gimmicks on here. Just getting like little corners, little edges of the, the cleaver, other weapons on here. Just a little bit around that ring right there. And these little, uh, if you want to go a little extra, these little gouges and things in the weapons themselves, you go uh, just on one side of them, that's going to make it stand out even more. See that? Barely. And put it on this side. Merlin's down here to support me and my hobby. And just picking out other pieces of metal here. Okay. Starting to look like a BBEG boss. All right, now one more thing. On top of here, let's see if I can get to two things actually, because these straps can be just about any kind of color you want it's using the same brown or leather that we used. Rhinex hide on one side. What we're gonna do is go ahead and build up the color just on the, the meat pot a little bit. It's red and kind of build up the color, I think. I'm using a deep red from scale 75. I don't know. Whenever I use kind of like a big bright color, I usually go with uh, scale 75. Just a preference thing. So this we already had like a just kind of a mixture between leather brown and a red in here already. Now I'm just building up this like really gross uh, Yeti heavy chili, whatever we uh, discovered in here. Let me see if I can gross myself out just painting this thing. These big meatballs, I guess they're bubbles, but I'm gonna call them meatballs. those colors up a little bit and then we can also do this on the on the meat on his shoulder a little bit Kind of reminds me of playing Diablo with the big butcher that comes in out of freaking nowhere and scares, just scared the crap out of me. When I was a kid, when I first came across the butcher, I was like, no thank you. My brother can play this game. I want to watch and hide from the corner.
fresh meat. Yeah, the whole arena of even just fighting this guy would be pretty cool. And different little pillars, like hanging meat that you can take cover behind and things like that. Let me know what you do you would do for like a like a kitchen throwdown. Would it be more like silly and zany? Or would you go the Diablo route, I guess would be the other side of that. And just say, no, these guys are here. Uh, to bring the pain. And what kind of treasure uh, would the players, could they expect? It doesn't have to be like a crazy magic item, I would guess. Maybe just like a cooking recipe. There we go, let's go. Maybe just like a little bit inside where the soup is. My last color will be on top of those meatballs, I assure you, but I like building up some of the color here. Kind of nice to look at. You know, so if you've ran this adventure before, let us know how it went. I think it's worth picking up because you get all these stat blocks, really cool miniatures, and you get double-sided maps. And it's things that you don't have to run the adventure if you want, if you don't want to, but you also get, you know, like the difference in, in maps and... I like things that can be used for not uh, just like one encounter, but maybe that there are just a colony of, of yetis that are in an old abandoned outpost. Maybe they're in like a kind of a cabin fever situation where, you know, something is already in with them and they're trying to get out. I would be so down if there was a 5e version of the thing, you know, John Carpenter's the thing. And you never know who to trust, could be one of the players. Just continuing to add layer of layer, just wet blending of the little bubbles on top of the cauldron. Trying to get the best angles for you guys. Let me know how it is, and I'm receptive to any feedback. Just know that it is going to get better eventually here. Because I love the hobby. I love teaching people new, like, little things. And everybody has their own style. Maybe your style is completely different from mine. And that's okay too. It's like this guy uses Citadel for his silver. Like maybe there's like a big Vallejo silver community. I don't know. All right, I like that. I think we have a lot of really cool details and stuff in this model. I can add like another Agros Dunes uh, layer to show you guys. You know, I'm just aiming for just the the top where you can see an actual difference here. And you just keep doing that over and over. 
until the top is just basically like a dark brown. I do that for a lot of things. I do that for animals. I do that for minotaurs. You name it. All right. And one of the final things I'm going to show you, we have Thousand Suns Blue. I'm going to take some of that. It has this really cool icy, cold appearance to it. Just water it down so it's not too thick. And I'm going to use this as a base coat for the entire top of the miniature. almost appears that he's standing on ice. This is his last menu. If he doesn't improve and impress the Orc King, maybe they're just gonna have him walk across the ice like they do in Batman, the third one. The Tom Hardy, oh yes, kind of Batman. Is it Batman Rises? Batman Trinity. Where if you're found guilty, they tell the prisoners to go walk across the ice and maybe they can make it to, to land on the other side. But odds are that's not happening. Okay. I can do that. We can get a little Lothan blue. Make sure that's nice and light as well. And that just goes over some of the areas that we were already painting. Nice little wet blend on top of the base. Have some cool colors because not all ice is consistent. It's not like one smooth color. It's like kind of a combination of colors. And basically we're just getting a good kind of backdrop and once that dries we're gonna add some snow to the top of that base I love themed bases that's why I really liked uh, Warhammer because you use a lot of the same bases for your troops they're all part of the same faction where they're fighting on the same piece of terrain, so they should be matching each other up. We're waiting for that to dry, just get a good look at it real quick. Looks like I got a little bit of rise of rust on the cloak, but I can go over the tops of it because it is that just that white color. And then I'll be able to paint his teeth. They kind of have that look to maybe get like an oop shop teeth bone in there. And when you're doing a lot of these at the same time, maybe you're, you're focusing on one color for both models. This comes with two cooks 
So you're doing these at, uh, simultaneously. But this is going to look really cool on tabletop. And while I wait, basically going to add just a little bit of Bane Blade, I believe, to the boots. Just waiting for this to dry. This is another really cool one. This is Ard Coat, technical. And it's kind of got that consistency of a glossy nail polish. Just finding the best angle here. And then you just apply that couple coats of this over any surface that you want to be kind of glossy. So I definitely have to go in that like liquid soup surface there. And I say like a couple coats just in case you miss anything, any part of that surface. Also gonna do this moist meat right here. Yes, players will say that's gross. Or hungry, that'll make them hungry. I don't, it's kind of hard to tell sometimes with players. The meat eaters definitely will say hungry. Other players may not feel that way. But either way, now both of those surfaces are glossy. And now one of the parts I think is one of my favorite things to do is basing. And this is just a simple version of that. But basically what you would do is you could also have like some rocks and things that you can fill the area. Uh, basically things that you can find outside would work really well too. But what I'm going to do is take my little, it's a um, texture. A little stick from Citadel. And go ahead and grab some texture and kind of push this around on the base of the miniature. This one's called Valher Valhallen Blizzard. A nice little texture 
paint you apply it to the top of the miniature and it looks like snow which fits the the thematic the theme of the the orcs very well or this battalion of orcs and looks really cool over top of the ice there. And I just take my time with this, just kind of push and maneuver the texture around. It's one of those things where you can go either really heavy snow, like they're trudging through like a, a ton of snow, or it's just uh, freshly fallen or it's soaking a muddy battlefield by applying a different texture maybe like Morden Earth or something first and then applying once that's dry applying the snow over top of it also creates a really good illusion as well I'm really excited to introduce you guys to our, our tabletop setups too. We've got some cool maps, got some cool terrain that I've uh, amassed and painted over the years. And maybe even show you my version of the Hall of the, the Orc King when this is all said and done. I'm gonna have to apply a little bit more snow right there. But yeah, go ahead and take your time on this part. Uh, photos will be up shortly of our orc cook. I'm showing you what our progress looks like so far. Some more breakdowns of with the with the horns and the darkening for the the antlers. And that will be up on Merlin's Vault. You can check out these videos on Instagram or photos on Instagram, videos on YouTube, and be able to see the entire battalion of Hall of the Orc King. This is Clay from Merlin's Vault. We'll see you next time. Peace.